You genuinely dread winning a tournament because you know the response that's gonna come, which is a really weird feeling because obviously, oh my God, yeah, I've won. But it's like, wow, I literally know that the rest of my day I'm gonna be getting notification after notification after notification. And you literally, you have to ignore it because if you don't, you would be in such a horrible place mentally. Yeah, uh, my name is Bella Selwood. Um, I go by Crimson online. Um, I play Rocket League um, semi-professionally or professionally, um, most recently for Resolve. Um, and my greatest achievement in Rocket League is probably the Commonwealth Gold Medal. Um, I guess being a trans woman myself, um, it was quite a simple sort of, um, oh, this makes sense to, to look at um, inclusion and diversity and things like that. Um, and it sort of helped me personally, um, sort of just find my footing, where I wanted to go, where I didn't want to go, safe spaces and things like that. Um, especially in Rocket League, you have um, a few like tournaments um, and they're quite safe spaces. Resolve has been brilliant for us um, last year. I know Jeff really sort of prides himself on looking after his players and not taking rubbish from other people and really supporting them and backing them. Um, which was really, really nice. So a lot of it will probably come from Twitter and things like that. So you win a tournament, the tournament organizers or Liquipedia will announce it and then you'll just get <laughs> spam, hate, um, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a lot of realizing who you don't want to interact with and taking those people out of like uh, blocking them sort of thing. Um, so making sure they can't interact with the post, making sure that because they're not saying anything helpful, they're not really adding anything at all. So it's a uh, resolve, there's a lot of taking people like that out of um, the uh, equation. Um, and I, I remember Jeff saying whilst we were doing the chat, he said, I've never blocked so many people in my entire life. Um, which is, it's, it's sad, it's a bit of a shame, but it's sort of, it makes the space safer. It's really nice to have like the public backing of like um, an organization that's, that's a very well-sized organization in the UK. Um, you sort of know that you're in good hands um, and that helps you as a player massively to perform when you're in the right headspace, mentally, etc. You know that the people behind you back you and support you um, and it makes it easier to do the job that you have. Um, um, it's honestly just a case of you can't listen to people because if you do, you'll never get to where you want to be and you'll let them win. Um, so many people are trying to bring you down consistently. And yeah, there have been times where it's been like, this is really hard. Everyone um, doesn't want me here. Everyone hates me, blah, blah, blah. Um, and you do think of maybe uh, taking a break or stopping entirely. Um, but it's that internal fight with yourself that you sort of know that that's what you want to do. You, you know that's where you belong, I guess. Um, and just to prove people wrong sort of thing. Um, spite is a very good motivator. You genuinely dread winning a tournament because you know the response that's going to come, which is a really weird feeling because obviously, oh my God, yeah, I've won. But it's like, wow, I literally know that the rest of my day I'm going to be getting notification after notification after notification. And you literally, you have to ignore it because if you don't, you would be in such a horrible place mentally. There's so many people who say, oh, I want you dead. You don't belong here. Um, they'd never say it to your face, but it's the online world that we live in, but you have to, you have to ignore it. It's so unhealthy to, to let media dictate what you do and who you are. Um, and it's one of the biggest parts of the job. It's not my job personally to educate people yeah. like as much as I'd like to help and, and I'm happy to, to educate people who are interested. It's um, not that it's not my job, but I have a responsibility in that regard, but I have to be happy myself and it's very draining mentally um, to do something like that consistently. And I think it needs a wider approach from an organization or a, a game developer, something like, game changes and things like that. What Riot's doing is brilliant for the, for the scene um, when it comes to marginalized gender and um, women in esports. I think it's, women are very, very new in, in esports specifically. I think it's a very, very male dominated scene and 
to have these building blocks to sort of help push us as women to get closer to how professional the, the male scene is. I think um, things like women in esports and game changers are huge for developing that talent and people having those sort of safe spaces in general. Um, and it's where people can sort of learn to thrive and push boundaries that they never thought they'd be able to. Educating from a younger age is a really big thing, but there's definitely a fine line. You don't want to shove it down people's throats to the point where, oh, I don't want to hear about this, I, etc. Um, it can really sort of turn people off in that regard. But like having a brief sort of education that's not overly um, intrusive from a young age would be really, really impactful, I think. Because a lot of it is 14, 15, 16 year olds. I don't care what I say. I don't, nothing matters really to at that age. Um, or they think that nothing matters, whereas obviously everything stays online. Everything's going to be looked at when you go for a job or whatever. Um, and so many people are destroying careers just by hating on people. I think a lot of it is about finding that community that you can sort of resonate with. Um, I think Women in Esports does a brilliant job with sort of bringing people in, looking after them, nurturing them and sort of watching them grow. And, and I think that's a huge part of people um, comfortability and just being able to be who they are and finding those spaces um, in general is, is huge for your personal growth as, as a person and then also as a player or a caster or a broadcaster, whatever you want to go into, you, you have a huge scope um, when it comes to esports uh, specifically. Um, yeah, no, it's obviously very exciting. Um, it's a really brilliant sort of um, initiative um, for marginalized genders and uh, women in esports generally, um, specifically like across all different um, mannerisms of um, job in the industry um, and hearing so many things from so many different people. I'm only a player. I only have that perspective. But I'll then go to sort of talk to somebody who does broadcasting in Overwatch or someone who does content creation here. And you get so many different perspectives and point of views and it's really interesting and eye-opening.